Greetings, my name is JC. And I'm Ian. And this is the Gamer's Guy, Dan. Uh, we decided that we would take uh, some time to go over this week's uh, State of Play from PlayStation. Uh, it's the third episode that they've released for this. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. Um, so, Ian, you're pretty excited about the new Call of Duty Modern Warfare game. How about you uh, talk about that a little bit? Yeah, honestly, I wasn't. Uh, I had no interest in it when I first heard about it, but they showed sure. a like story trailer for this, and it looks really, really good. Yeah, the story um, does actually look pretty interesting. I'm I'm hoping that it's at least like a six to eight hour kind of cinematic mm-hmm. action experience. Um, and from what I can see, they kind of want to throw it back a little bit to uh, like older modern warfare games, right. um, where they really bring back the the like cinematic single player action. I think they've got something to prove this time around because a lot of people have been giving them grief about the single player content. So yeah, it would be nice to see something really strong this, uh, this time around, Mm -hmm. but uh, they released a whole bunch of VR stuff. Yeah, they certainly did. Like one of the main segment sections of the actual state of play was totally on VR, which is kind of refreshing, especially since uh, the new consoles coming out, you know, probably sometime next year. Um, And uh, you know, they're not dropping VR it seems. So that's, that's good. No, um, but yeah, let's talk about uh, some of those VR games. Um, Aspire One uh, VR Operative is the. Uh, this is interesting to me because it's a stealth actual FPS game, and stealth genre is generally pretty well received in games like uh, everything from the Metal Gear games to um, Splinter Cell Splinter Cell, and uh, those uh, ninja games on the PlayStation. Uh, what were they called? Um, I can see the fucking Tenchu. Yeah, it's Tenchu. Right. Okay, Tenchu. <laughs> Derp. Okay. We had to look that up. That's why it was cut. But yeah, Tenchu. I haven't played that game in years, but my one yeah, friend those were a really, lot of really fun. loved those games. And um, anyway... Uh, my point is stealth games are generally pretty well received and this is a VR stealth game. So I'm really interested to see how they handle this. Um, I'm not overly sure I'll be actually getting the game, but I'm definitely going to be paying attention to it to see kind of what kind of gameplay and mechanics that they make. And um, yeah, to see what their decisions are on the actual um, uh, gameplay aspects of it. So I'll be keeping an eye out for it. I'm super curious because the way they kind of like, laid it out it looks a little bit to me like blood and truth at least in like okay. gameplay yeah um i'm just i'm really curious on how they handle movement because i know in blood and truth it was on rails right whereas a stealth game i feel like you need to have a little bit more flexibility mm-hmm. so we'll be I'll, I'll be keeping an eye on that i i really want to know how how the movement's handled because i know for me anything where i've had to move around like in skyrim and that right. it hasn't hasn't agreed with my brain <laughs> so fair enough i'm fair really enough. curious if it, if it ends up being a little bit more like blood and truth i'm way in cool cool uh the second game from the vr titles that we wanted to go over was after the fall and this game seems actually really really cool I'll probably be picking it up uh, especially since it's up to four players and it's yeah. a fps vr game it seems to be kind of more of a maybe action of entry uh, sur- survival elements of it, perhaps. There's not too much information about it, but basically what it sounds like based off of looking at the information on their website is that it's a nice covered post-apocalyptic game where uh, some people are immune to the effects of this one outbreak, which was caused by, um, I guess, a synthetic drug or something like that. Um, the game's supposed to come out in 2020, and I'm definitely really interested in this game, especially because of the multiplayer aspect. It'll be um, pretty cool to be able to play a VR game with a friend or friends, uh, and hopefully I can use the aim controller while playing this game. And if Ooh. those two things are done well, then I'll definitely be picking up this game. Yeah, I mean, the the multiplayer was kind of the selling point mm-hmm. for me. So, I mean, like, yeah. If JC picks it up, I'm I'm probably in. Fair enough. So we're probably going to um, be getting it then. <laughs> most likely. I, I actually am hoping that it doesn't work with the aim controller. I hope it's just the move. Oh, yeah. If you've got dual pistols, f- then it would be awkward with the aim controller. But if it's a rifle or something like that, then, you know. It, yeah, if it's if it's exclusively a rifle or something. But the, like melee combat in that with, a, with the move controllers, I feel like it would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. But there's, there's a no- really big... 
there's a really big one coming up that you were looking forward to. Yes. Yeah. Space Channel 5 is back. Uh, this is a Rhythm Dreamcast yeah. game that's being remade. Uh, Ian's not as excited of it, about it as I am, but uh, the uh, the game showed only about a minute clip about it, but they did actually uh, release an article on the PlayStation blog that kind of went into a lot more detail about what they're doing with the game. It sounds like they're only about 40% complete, so this game probably won't come out for a year or so and if i were to give it my best guess there that's just my speculation but uh yeah so they basically are using the original motion actor from uh the first games for ooh la la which is kind of neat um that they that cool. um, brought in that person back um, it's the- cool that she still has that much movement at like 60 years old because this well, game the voice actor is different is than the old. move yeah but the voice actor is different than the um the the movement uh the movement actor they actually don't know uh the voice actor retired and they actually put a note in the dev blog that if anybody knows how to contact her that they would love to be able to get her as the voices ooh la again because i guess those are two different people um, but yeah, I guess they mentioned that they chose VR because they thought it would be a great fit for the visual style of like the, the 1960s, um, kind of nuclear era, um, like, a uh, art style that they, um, a little bit of an acid trip in there as well. Um, art style, uh, that they used in the first, uh, two games and they definitely looks like a upscaled res version of it and uh yeah so and one thing that they noted which actually has me uh really glad is that they are not just re-importing the game and putting it in a vr environment and kind of upscaling the existing assets they're recreating them from the ground up so it will actually um look better in in uh in in the long run because they're doing this it'll still look the same and it kind of has a very simple graphical um style to it so you know um it it looked good for its time so it might look a little dated in that respect but it is a style that they're sticking with so you know i respect them for that and um the um the story and gameplay sounds very similar to the original. Um, we don't know anything about the actual gameplay elements. I have some speculations on that, but for the story portion of it, I guess you're not playing um, and controlling Ulala herself in this game. You're a new rookie reporter who joins her, and that's kind of where it adds in there. And they've mentioned that they've added in a new game feature, which is striking a pose, which allows you to dodge some of the enemy's tricky um, abilities and stuff like that. So um, that will probably make the game a little bit easier. Um, And um, I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work. They didn't uh, go into it. But based on the way that they moved in the video and how you can kind of move in some dance rhythm games that either use like a Wii mode or the move controller. My guess is that you're probably going to be moving the move controllers around to basically move your character's arms and stuff like that or to different locations. And they'll probably do some body um, tracking to see if you're in the right location and stuff like that for a dodge and whatnot. Um, So that could potentially be um, a lot of fun, Um, but because it is by Sega and I'm thinking it might actually be very similar to the uh, Hasune Miku games uh, where you basically have to press certain buttons at this right time um, and um, be at the right locations at the right time and stuff like that. And it, I'm guessing it's probably going to be similar to that game engine if I were to guess because um, you know there's only so many rhythm game engines and they're probably not going to 100% reinvent the wheel. And I, I will say the game isn't going to be a... Um, as big of a hit as it potentially could be if they keep the exact same gameplay as the original Space Channel 5, which if you've never played it before, but you've played Parapeta Rapper, they're very similar games where you're just basically playing Simon. Um, yeah. Buster Groove is another game that has the same type of game style as well for the PlayStation, um, which was pretty good for its time. Um, but they are going to have a playable demo at PAX East, and I'm pretty excited to hear more information about this. And yeah, I hope that they get the in touch with the original voice actor, or at least find a voice actress who um, has a very similar uh, voice. And yeah, sign me up. I'm excited about it. <laughs> no, nah. you're, you're not. This it's, is like it's, this is like ten, it's like ten years done. too late. Yeah, this is. If they would have put something like this out 10 years ago, it would have been a big deal. But I feel like now it's just, it's, it's going to be dated. It's going to feel dated. 
Potentially. Uh, I think it's really, I don't fully disagree with you. And I, I potentially think that it's going to be how they manage to handle the game engine with the dance aspects of it and how yeah. well that's done is I think really going to make or break this game. Um, and that's and why the music. I'm Yeah. The music is going to be, um, like a r- retro, uh, sixties funk groove, I think is what they said in the article. Yeah, or at least hint but it's going to gonna, it's gonna depend on how good the music actually is. Yes, yeah, for That's sure. That's going to be a big a big factor. Yeah, so I guess we'll know we'll PAX East. <laughs> um, so those are the VR games that we found interesting. Um, there's, yeah, there's a bunch more, but yeah, those, those are, are kind the, of the ones that the like highlights. jumped out. The um, medieval game is a remake that's happening that I've talked about on the show before that I played at Fan Expo 2019, and they actually just released a demo of it. So I wanted to mention this for anybody who's kind of on the fence or interested in playing this game who never played it originally or who did. And yeah, so from the looks of it, I haven't downloaded it yet, but it looks very similar to the demo that I played at uh, Fan Expo this year. It's probably the same one. Well, I mean, probably. I can't say for sure, but it's um, probably the, the same footage one. that they showed in their video were was basically different scenes of areas that were in the very intro of the game that were in the demo um, at Fan Expo. So it's probably like eighty percent the same thing. Um, but it, yeah, it, it gives you a really good feel of what the game is going to be like. And if you like classic three uh, D platforming games. I think you'll really enjoy this game. Um, and you and you unlock a helmet if you finish it. So Yeah, and I'm really curious to know if that's going to be exclusive or if it's just like a helmet that you don't get until uh, later. I don't actually remember the helmet being an item. I haven't really played this game since the early 2000s. So um, yeah, that's one of the other reasons why I'm excited about it. But it's coming October 25th, which is almost exactly a month from now. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's coming out pretty soon. And uh, yeah, so um, stay tuned for an eventual review for that, I guess, because I will definitely be getting that game. Uh, Ian, you wanted to uh, talk a little bit about uh, Civilization VI? Yeah, the the hilarious part about this is we, we were discussing it kind of as we were like going through making notes about the whole thing. Yeah. And I mean, I'm, I'm so conflicted by this because Civilization Revolution on console was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel the the interface for Civ Six will transfer over like wonderfully to console. Yeah, and it'll, it'll be a great place to play it, and um, like you can play it from the comfort of your couch instead of having to sit at your PC, mm-hmm. which is awesome. But uh, I am really put off by the fact that it's not a like not a complete edition. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a sixty dollar release from what we've been able to find. And a fifty dollar uh, expansion bundle. So you're yeah. looking at one hundred and ten for which a is interesting. Three year old game. Yeah, which is interesting because that's effectively the same price on Steam, which is another area that you can get it. Uh, it's kind of like um, one of the, the the biggest places you can get it right now, and which it was released there first. And like it's right around the same time frame. You're also going to see. Like the Steam Winter Sale coming up, which is probably going to have Civ Six on it. Yeah, it was on sale last uh, um, Winter Sale as well. But the probably thing, in a bundle for like yeah. And, and that, that's what I was going to say. The the weirdest thing that kind of annoys me about this release is that it's not the gold edition. Because if you go to the Steam page, there's a gold edition for the game, uh, which is $120 Canadian. So that's probably like $90 uh, to $100 US. And uh, it has all the expansions and civilizations that have been released, all the DLC, in one big bundle. And I don't understand why they're not just releasing this as a gold edition. If you want to play the game... Um, regardless of what platform you want to play it on, you probably want to play it with the expansion. And if you don't think that you want to play with the expansion and you really enjoy the core game, eventually whenever you get to the expansion, you're going to be like, oh man, I wish I was playing the expansion for these last 100 hours because the gameplay is so much better. Yeah. Just trust me, like their expansion packs are very, very good. They make the game a lot better. Uh, and it, it's always a great evolution of the Civ series every time that they've released an expansion ever since, like, especially Civ 4. Um, and yeah, so I, I just, I'm flabbergasted that they're like, even if they were to charge 
$110, which there's a lot of contention on like whether it should be that expensive because it's so old. But even if they were to charge like air quotes, like for full price for the gold edition or a little bit more money for the gold edition, at least you're getting the gold edition. You don't have to worry about, um, you know, um, buying it separately because you want to save a little bit of money where, you know, or at least I, I give me an option. Like yeah. give me a, give me, there's a $60 version. Give me a $90 version that yeah. has everything. And like, what, I'll, I'll happily pay the 90 bucks mm -hmm. and get it all instead of here's one version for 60 yeah. bucks. And now you got to download the extra stuff for 50 bones. Like I'm really curious. This to is see a real cash grabby for me. Yeah. I, I'm really curious to see what their uh, attachment rate for the expansion pack versus the core game is. Cause I'm willing to bet it's going to be like, 70 80 percent attachment rate so if it's, and it's that high it's anyway, honestly why because they don't really release gold? numbers for digital sales we're late like, something we're we'll not gonna know. know yeah we'll never know no. but it would be interesting to know regardless but let's move on um yep. yeah yeah to to something awesome mm -hmm. sort of <laughs> uh we we get a an exclusive pro bundle for death stranding yep which i i love how how hard sony is backing this game because it's either going to be <laughs> like some kind of timeless piece of art or it's going to be a hot piece of garbage <laughs> and yeah, either way and the what like, who's going to have that opinion is the mass of gamers not the like kojima fans out there because if you're a kojima fan you're going to like this game because yeah a lot of his games to an extent you know they, they have a same type of aesthetic so I'm, I'm sure kojima fans are really going to like this but i'm a little curious to see if the masses like this game he, Especially with he, has a, he has a lot of similar beats, mm -hmm. but at the same time, he's always kind of had somebody kind of like reining him in a little bit. He <laughs> doesn't have anybody reining him in at this point. I'm sure he has somebody, but they're just... I know. don't think so. I think he's... like It's his own studio. He's full Kojima. But Sony's publishing it, so they have some sort of control. But I, we don't know if they're doing anything. <laughs> we'll see. It's very little if it's anything. I'm not debating that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I gotta say, though, that, uh, that controller, the like... Uh, like I guess see through yellow, right? That looks pretty dope. It does, and the <laughs> console has like two hands on it. That was pretty sweet looking as well. It would be interesting if they were like uh, actually unique handprints, like they did with the the Resident Evil controllers years ago. Oh, okay. How how those had unique blood prints on it? It would be really cool if they actually had a unique, like every controller like, had a different handprint, or yep. they were just a specific person. Every unique had it. Every controller had a different blood print on it. Oh, okay, I you know knowing Kojima, it's probably his handprints. Like, <laughs> I, yeah, <laughs> or some celebrity, probably yeah. a celebrity. Yeah, his favorite. It's probably celebrity. Norman Reedus's hands. Maybe. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, the so I mean, we'll see. Yep, we'll see. It's kind of cool that it's a it's a pro. Yeah, that, that it's not like a they've kind of given up on the regular ones where you still see um microsoft releasing like one s and one x versions of stuff yeah this is like well they came out with one in spider-man which isn't like too yeah. long ago so they are still and that was one. just a the spider-man was just a pro i believe yeah and hopefully they so, do one for the last of us because i don't have a ps4 pro and i might actually buy that one if they do release one so we'll see I won't uh, have Norman Reedus' hands on it. No, it won't, but, but I don't care if it does. <laughs> we we did get a cool, uh, some cool indie game announcements. Yeah, we certainly did. Um, I'm actually pretty pumped for Arise. Yeah, this game looks interesting. I think the art style it, has me most interested. And to me, it kind of looks like a Nordic journey. Oh, it's certainly influenced by like Nordic mythology in the afterlife. But also journey. Mm. Like, I see a lot of a dude going up a hill. Oh yeah, because they show the light up at the top, yeah. and it's like it looks like you're just trying to get there. Um, and yeah, you go through different terrains and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's definitely Nordic influence, which is cool. It's probably gonna have a sad ending. Oh, probably. It's probably if I if I were to guess, this is speculation on my point. Um, but it's kind of fun to do that. So, um, in the trailer, they showed a woman, uh, a statue of a woman, and I'm assuming that's his wife. Yeah, because in the probably, in the like little cover art they show, they show a spectral woman like reaching yeah. down for him, and it's probably him trying to reconnect with his wife. But then something's yeah. wrong, and then he has to try and fix something, or you know, she didn't make it to Valhalla or something like that, and he has to live with it. Who who knows? It'll probably be a story told through silence, if I'm were to guess. 
Um, yeah. Oh, and ho- honestly, it's, hopefully. Yeah, it'll be very effective if they do it that way through like emotion and expression. Uh, it'll be a very effective way to tell like a uh, an afterlife story. Um, and I'm I'm honestly excited for this. This is probably going to be downloadable only and probably somewhere between twenty and thirty bucks. Yeah. And probably like no more than six to eight hours. Yeah. Yeah. I'm my, in. My guess is probably eight to ten. Yeah. Uh, and we have another not- notice from a game that I'm slightly excited for, mainly because of the company that's making it, but I don't know if I'm going to enjoy it as much as uh, the previous game. I'm super game. excited for this. <laughs> but uh, After Party from Night School Studios, uh, I-, I think this game will really make or break it for me, depending on its comedy. If the comedy is good, I think that the game will be great. Um, but if the comedy falls flat i i don't know if i'll enjoy it as much and the reason why i say that is because in the dialogue you could see that they were trying to be kind of like witty and comical a little bit um and i wasn't laughing out loud and i don't expect to but just i like if they do have a lot of clever comedy in it then i think it'll be pretty good but um yeah so i i think that the graphical style um, is really interesting because it l- reminds me of a blend between what they did with Oxenfree and that game engine, but they kind of reskinned it with something that sort of looks like Grim Fandango, uh, which yeah. is kind of interesting um, choice um, because yeah, Grim Fandango has to do with death, and this is a game that takes place in hell. Um, but uh, the also, art style sort hell kind of looks a lot like New York. Yeah, it sort of like does. New York actually. City. It I looks didn't... very much like New York City. Yeah, actually, now that you mention that, I, I kind of agree. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you figure out the plot. You're two college students who almost graduated and ended up dying for some unknown reason. They showed some gameplay. Um, and basically, in the plot, you're trying to basically break out of hell um, by partying and drinking with Satan or something. They didn't You've gotta, explicitly you tell to, you, but you try and break out. You have yeah, to outdrink Satan. Out drink Satan. And- and then Satan's like, well, I'm going to make them out drink all the Lord of Hell first. And yeah, I'm like, exactly. yes, I want this. <laughs> yeah. And it, Give me all of this. The gameplay showed you a lot of different, like, quick shots of mini games. So it looks like the game is going to be heavily mini game focused with the story element behind it, just like Oxenfree, which is a little bit of a addition and evolution from their formula from Oxenfree, which is nice to see. And um, it does have that, tr- that, that typical Oxenfree, like, three... Yeah, dialogue the dialogue system the is heads. intact, and I really love the dialogue system, especially yeah. since if you responded too quickly, the reactions would be different, and if you responded too slowly, you wouldn't get to react as well. You can actually play Oxenfree without responding um, at all, I believe, or like 90% you can choose not to respond in that game, But uh, and people are like, why well, didn't you say anything? Like... Anyway, so it, I, I'm really interested. I'm going to get it. It's coming out October 29th, which is perfect because that's right before Halloween. Um, yeah, so, like I, I know what I'm going to be doing that week. Yeah. I'm going to be playing this game. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, but like I said, to be honest... Plus 20 demonic cocktails. <laughs> yep. Just in, just in time for Halloween. Just in time for Halloween. But uh, yeah, I, I really hope that the dialogue and... Um, is really good because it's a narrative based game engine and oxen free was narrative based and that's why that game was so well um yeah and if they put in some pretty good humor in there like it looked like they were they were hinting at it probably has some then i, and I think a couple, it's gonna like, be a really great game as well yeah i think yeah. multiple endings is gonna be mm-hmm. but uh no we got more big news mm-hmm. uh they gave a preview of the october ps plus games yeah i'm really impressed by this october's release i could not believe i mean i'm not a fan uh well anyone who watches this knows we don't play a ton of sports games no but the fact Unless that the show World 19, Series baseball for the genesis <laughs> well, the show 19 came out in march and yeah. this is like six months later mm-hmm. and it's free that's crazy. Like that's that's huge. And it like I to my understanding is that the show is kind of like the big baseball game. So this is yeah, it's kind of like giving out NHL twenty like six months after it comes out. So yeah, for nothing, for nothing, for having a subscription, which is fantastic. Yeah, um, that's that's like I'm gonna I'm gonna add it to my library. I probably won't download it or ever play it, but it's. It's awesome. Like that's that's amazing that they would actually just hand that out 
Um, yeah. Also, The Last of Us Remastered, which, uh, I mean, I can see why they did it. Yeah, I actually already have this. Whatever I bought my PS4, it came with The Last of Us Remastered. Um, it's It's been discounted so many times, and it was true. a pack-in forever. Like, I feel like most people have this at this point. Probably, but they're going to... I feel like they're going to push The Last of Us 2 really hard, and there's going to be yeah. a lot of people who haven't played it. Because, um, you know, there's quite a bit of articles. <laughs> you really should play it. Um, I mean, I'm going to download this because I actually don't have a copy remastered and i've never played it right so. and see so that this is the perfect example of why this is a good idea because there are those people out there who know of the game and have never played it um yeah. and you know it's the journey it's not necessarily um the ending to the game so if you know what happens in the end of the game the writing of this game is fantastic it's by naughty dog the writing is generally really really great and yeah. um you know they they have great writers and yeah, so you can download this October for free so they can get ready for their final trailer, which was The Last of Us 2. Um, this game I'm super excited for, but... Uh, <laughs> I really have nothing to say about this because it... it I mean, it looks beautiful. It does. For especially, of- It's fascinating to me because the PlayStation 4 has released these games in the last like two years of the life cycle and the graphics just keep on getting better and better with more details and stuff like that yeah. and i'm like why didn't we have this two years ago like holy crap this is amazing especially well, with like it's, it's the that, true color it's, aspects of the game and like some of the hdr con- like stuff that they've started added in with the ps4 it's, pro it's people and stuff. pushing things like pushing things the way like i'm mm-hmm. i'm willing to bet that when death stranding comes out it is going to blow everyone's mind visually oh probably because Kojima has a tendency to release things right at the end of a console's life cycle that are the most ridiculous things that you've ever seen on the console. That's very true. And you, yeah, that's very true. Yeah. So um, we did get a release date for The Last of Us 2, February 21st, 2020. So that's actually not that far away. So, you know, we don't have to wait too long. Uh, no, and it's a good time to release something like this, too, because it yeah. won't be standing up against too much. Uh, I think quite a few games. Um the remake is coming out for FF7 around that time too, so they're it's kind of April. Okay. I mean, it, it's I know it's not that. I guess that much. yeah. If the game doesn't, it won't be selling in April. I guess everybody will have bought it by then. <coughs> yeah, like anyone who wants this is getting this day one, mm-hmm. yeah. and is probably going to have it finished by the time the remake is uh, is out. Yeah. Um, but I kind of wanted to go into the trailer because th- this is this is a little bit of a, a gripe. And if you haven't watched the trailer, then go watch and come back. All right, now that you're back, um, <laughs> this is why I don't like trailers. Um, if you know me, I only watch the first international trailer of a movie that I want to watch, and I won't watch another trailer. And I generally don't really watch um, many game trailers, especially it, it, with games that I know that I'm going to not want spoiled for me. Um, and this is a perfect example because um, they obviously killed um, Dina and that's a major plot element. And it's obvious that now the game is just going to potentially just be the revenge trope, which I'm hoping they don't make that the main focus of it. I don't think they're that dumb um, to do that because the first game is a lot about the dialogue of the game and the interaction between Joel and Ellie. And I thought this game might be a little bit more of the interaction between Dina and Ellie, and it probably isn't going to be. If I were to guess, she's probably going to die within the first couple of hours. Uh, And then, you know, uh, the other big uh, reveal was the Joel reveal, and they actually showed him in this trailer, and uh, he's going to help Ellie with his adventure of um, her her revenge, essentially, and not let her do it uh, herself as effectively what he says in the trailer and yeah these are two really big moments in the game and although they might be early and i personally feel that they should have hyped the game they could have just hyped the game just as much by giving you a little bit more uh scenes that happened in the game and a little bit of the gameplay or whatever and um basically not reveal these and then whenever the game actually does launch then um i understand this is a pipe dream for everybody who's listening because they don't do this but they do sometimes if they were to all of a sudden like 
this wasn't as known and the people were playing the game, then it'd be like, holy crap, like this just happened in the game. Like, wow, that was a really great reveal. But we actually saw the reveal in the trailer. There's going to be no surprise to it. We know what the scene looks like. We know it's about to happen. So it's just going to be like, oh, this must be where Joel comes in. Um, or, I mean, it could just be a huge bait and switch because people have It could have be, been but getting Naughty late. Dog hasn't really been known by as people who do that. So that's why I'm kind of speculating in this manner. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I mean, we'll, we'll see. Like, I will. It's the what the last Avengers movie we knew absolutely nothing about, even though we saw like 30 trailers before its release. We didn't. Like, we didn't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes, but the the movie was drastic, drastically different from what they showed us. Yeah, that's so true. I'm, I'm hopeful that maybe a lot of this stuff is. Maybe nothing. It probably isn't, though. But, you know, we'll, we'll know, wait. We'll see. It's Like I said, it's coming out February 21st. And having said all that and my annoyance with the trailer, it still was a great trailer. It got me pumped for the game. I cannot wait for it. Uh, and, you know, as long as there's no not too much uh, stereotypical revenge rage in the game, uh, because that can kind of get old and very linear, and The Last of Us wasn't that type of game. Uh, and, you know, it then it, it should be a really great game. And yeah, I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of um, moments between uh, Joel and Ellie in this game on them basically reconnecting or something similar to that effect because it seems like he kind of disappeared after the first game and Ellie kind of decided to leave, live her life a little bit and we'll probably learn a little bit about what happened with her opening up with Joel again a little bit more and everything and um I really hope that they address the end scene of the first game during this game and like that's something that they're not going to reveal in a trailer because like I don't feel that they're going to be that um, overt about what's going to be in the game but I really hope that they um, go over that because there's a lot of speculation and uh, it's pretty direct speculation but like yeah it, it's a really big moment and I feel that if they reconnected it probably would be brought up again and how they handle that it, as people um, or video game people I should say um, is going to be really really interesting and I have a lot of faith in this game and I think it's going to be really really great. So I just finished editing the episode for tomorrow and I was rendering it and I noticed on YouTube that there's actually a video that was released today that I didn't notice. That's The Last of Us Part 2 inside the demo, which was a demo that was released for the press and reviewers, basically. And I thought I would talk about it a little bit because I thought it was really, really interesting. Um, I think I might have been a little bit wrong on potentially when uh, Dina dies, but uh, it sounds still very obvious that she is because it might happen a lot further than like an hour or two into the game because they're actually talking about uh, a little bit of build up at the beginning of the game. So I thought I would mention that, but if you want to see some of the actual gameplay of the game, I highly recommend... Uh, uh, clicking on the video, um, I'll put a link to it in the description down below. They mentioned that they're going to be focusing a lot on the aspects of the relationships of the characters um, in that respect they're talking about uh, Ellie and Dina and Ellie and Joel and uh, the choices that Ellie kind of needs to make is sounds like it's going to be a really big aspect of it as well where you're gonna to have to essentially um live through the hardships or of making the decisions potentially on the redemption and want for revenge essentially um that the main plot seems to be highly focused on as i mentioned um just previously but the other thing that they also mentioned was actual gameplay aspects, which the cinematic trailer from the state of play earlier in the week did not actually go over. And this seems amazing. They revamped the entire combat system, it seems like, to basically be completely augmented. Um, and there's a little bit more stealth mechanics. They mentioned she, Ellie could go prone and she could hide like underneath a car or behind things, for example, and she could squeeze through uh various 
um, things that look like you might be able to fit through, which is something that's completely new and different. Also, they mentioned in the video that the um, system for the upgrades and stuff like that seems to be uh, revamped, and they're basically kind of... Uh, I don't know if they built it from the ground up or if they kind of just elaborated on the existing um, system that's there, but it seems like, based off of what they're saying anyway, that it's a lot different. Um, yeah, this seems really, really cool. There's new enemies, and another big thing of the aspect of it that I think will really help bring the humanity of the entire situation, especially since it's based off of a revenge plot, and this will... Um, only help with its writing that the enemies are going to be named and the ai will basically um call out to their other friends saying like oh they they got like um like a uh, sammy and like she, she she's dead like we need to we need to get this this character that's attacking us and stuff like that and naming them uh for for example and th that's uh really inspiring and neat because i don't think i can recall a game that's actually done that before and hearing the characters names and knowing that there's a little bit of a stealth element to it it, it kind of adds to the morality of the whole thing it's like you you just killed somebody that's not a very nice thing to do um so yeah it, it's really interesting it's an extra like 10 minutes of your time um and it sounds like they're you know, taking it to the next level, so to speak. And, you know, they, they released The Last of Us Part 1 at the end of the PlayStation 3's life cycle and pushed it to the limits. And it's now the ending of the PlayStation 4's life cycle. And it looks like they're pushing um, the game uh, system to its limits. And it's, it's definitely... I feel like this is going to be another one of those swan song games. I'm super excited. I, I just, I need, I need, I saw the video. I needed to stop the edit and add this in and talk about it a little bit because this game's going to be freaking awesome. Anyway, continuing on with the video. Um, so yeah, um, <laughs> that's our opinions on um, some highlights of the third episode for the state of play. And uh, we would like to know what you think. Uh, what are you excited for from the state of play uh, the most? And uh, yeah, let us know in the comments down below. Um, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe. And uh, we have um, two social media platforms that we post on frequently, uh, Twitter and Facebook. Uh, if you want to know what we're doing from time to time, we do post other stuff outside of um, the actual show itself. And um, yeah. Like this. Exactly. So stay tuned, and we'll see you in the next episode.